Basically, I didn't know what I was um, growing up, and I was really longing for that sense of belonging, so I made up my own race, Sang Genese. The waiting is agony. Oh, great. We'll adopt. I'll call my agent. He'll find some kid who wants in on the deal. I was born in the small village of Kenta in southern Vietnam, about an hour away from Saigon or so. My mom had me at a very young age, so she decided it would be best for both of us if she gave me up for adoption. And around 12 months, I was adopted by uh, my two dads. So I have a black dad, his name is Michael Bobbitt, and a white dad, his name is Craig Hanna. My dad, Craig, saw me and he couldn't contain himself apparently, so he pushed my other dad, Michael, out of the way and almost pushed him over the railing. I was just a baby with an ear infection. I got picked out of an orphanage and brought to you know one of the financially well endowed locations in, in the country. You get you get asked all the time, or I get asked all the time, why or what was it like growing up with two dads? Um, like, was it different? And I was like, different from what? That's the only experience that I have. And to me, it was. It's two people. It's two people raising you. Like, who? You don't see them have sex anyway. So why? Why does it matter? A lot of a lot of bullying that went on, um, especially to me in my elementary school, just um, for having such a different family life. Gay jokes um, directed towards me. You know, being that my parents were gay, that think I would catch it or something like it's a disease. There's definitely been times where I was like, damn. What if I did have? like a normal family. I remember, it sounds terrible, but I, I told my parents that I only wanted one dad because that's what all my other friends had. And that thought makes me just sick to my stomach now, even like thinking of it. But um, I remember I was like, yeah, I don't fit in. I guess today I'm still struggling with abandonment issues. It, it's kind of a feeling of like, why didn't she want me? What? did I do as an infant to, you know, end up in this situation. And I want to say it was 2016, my parents, um, my dad, my stepdad and I went to, uh, we went back to Vietnam for my first time since being brought here. It was my first time really being able to see like the obvious poverty um, and really like understand what was like what kind of situation these people were in. Going back as an 18 year old, it's, it's weird. Um, just kind of seeing the, the state that you know you could have grown up in. Um, we went back to the orphanage, and actually the old orphanage director heard that I was coming back, so he decided to come pay us a visit. And also some of the old caretakers that were there when I was there were still there, so they were you know, prepping the kids or whatever, and I came in and they are like, I think I remember you. Like, they actually like remembered my face and then they picked me out in a book. And I was like, wow, that is some crazy freaking recall, dude, that's nuts. I met this one girl, I forget her name, but she was just like tiny, she was like not even five foot, I'd say she was like four, seven, four, eight. But she came in the room and I was like, oh, hello, who are you? Is this like a, like a little kid? And they were like, no, actually she's, older than you. She's going to school through um, the orphanage right now. And I was like, wow, that is crazy. But it was just kind of weird. She was, she was 21. She was clearly malnourished. And you know, everybody there was shorter than me because I was on an American diet from a very young age. And you can clearly tell. It was just so interesting to see how my life could have been if I didn't get the opportunities that I did. So I don't take it for granted nearly as much as I did growing up because I just didn't really understand the opportunity that I was given. I don't think family is based on blood at all. I think that's who you're related to, but your family is who you are there for, who are there for you. You can have blood relation to someone and not feel a sense of family with them. And so for me, I don't have to worry about that. Family to me is whatever I want to make of it. My parents, the people that adopted me are family. My stepdad is family. My best friends that have gone through everything with me are my family. My dogs are my family. All the fish that I've had, you know. Family's extensive. I think you can open up family to anybody that's seen you at your worst. And then you know that they're 
deserve to be there for the best. Sang is one of the greatest and best friends you could ever have. I'm glad you, you know, got adopted and moved to America in the first place. I don't think I'll ever meet another Sang in my life, but um, why would I want to? And I know that feeling because every time he leaves me, I just want to cry. I'm so glad he lets me be his dad. But regardless of what you do, you're amazing, and I love you. Love you like a brother, man. Love you, Sang. I love you, brother. Love you, bro. Love you, big dog. Love you, man. I love you, kid. Bye.